been doing the the windrows. Do you have the windrows on your screen? No. So so it needs two inputs, right? Windrows needs wind speed and wind direction. I assume you know what is the windrows. Should I talk about what's the windrows? Sure. Okay. Just because we have other people watch listening or watching at the same time, I'll just say a little bit, but we don't go into details, assuming you guys know what is a windrose. So windrose is a graph that shows you how much wind you get from which direction and how often. So basically it has all this data on top of each other, how much wind from which direction and how often. Okay, so how to do it is basically for this file, it's just like type whatever I have down there, you just say open, it comes in, then you type import uh, EPW weather file, connect this thing here, connect this thing here, uh, it tells me something, it says oh please connect the, a valid EPW file, okay I'll do it because output of this is not a valid EPW file, I open this, I pressed open, Uh, so it has the stuff. Again, Winrose component is this one. You see so many inputs, but again, I look on, on this side, on the right side, and these two doesn't have a dash line, so this is the only two I should basically uh, provide data for it, and there is one more here, which is run it. For many components that I assume the calculation can be time consuming, you have a run it toggle. So you should set this thing to true to get this thing to work, to get the component to work. So it basically gives you the option of having multiple inputs and play with the data as much as you want and then say run it once. So you don't want everything that you change something because Grasshopper run it on the fly. You don't want that to happen. So what I did is wind speed and uh, wind direction. Sorry, I think it's a little bit confusing when I'm zooming in and zooming out. So this is wind speed and wind direction. I connect it here. And again, I need to, to do set run it to true. And as soon as I did this, something happened. We can go on the top view. Oh, I forget to say something. But it's fine. You will figure it out yourself. So for the 3D charts, you could, you could change the scale of the X, Y, Z of the, of the graph if you don't like the scale. And then if you, this is something like, you know, the old games that when you press like turbo and A, you go to the next level and nobody knows. So if you put the Z value to zero, it will give you a 2D graph. Let me do it actually. I mean, multiple people figured it out themselves. I don't know how, but they did it. And I don't know if Chris added this to, uh, to the, okay, it's not there. But what, what you can do, if you zero and connect zero to Z scale, it will be 2D, you know. So sometimes it's better to have it 2D, like it's, it's much easier for presentations. And you can change the scale of X and Y if you want. Okay, don't get confused. I, I, I went there for a second. I'm back. So top view, wind rows. So what this thing does is basically draw windrows. Okay, cool. And again, like it has all the stuff. So for here, I, I set the high bound to 15, which seems to be not the, the best number because we don't really get that much of 15. In my case, which is Chicago, I just removed that 15.4, okay. But there, what, there should be some average somewhere that you have 15, you see like here. The, the the average is not 15. Okay, so how should I like you see like how, how I'm thinking? That's all the point of, of the thing. So how can I find what is a good number for for the for the maximum for a good presentation? Can you hear me? Okay, just checking. <laughs> how can I find one way is just, just you, you want to present something, right? You want, for example, let's say you want to present it to the client and say, uh, okay, we did some studies and for the outdoor comfort during this time, we, we think you need a wind speed between six to nine. 
right, for example, or more than six is cool. So you want to, to show them and say when, whenever it's red, it's actually six. Or you want to say, you see the wind more than six coming from this direction. There are multiple ways, but the simplest way, if you don't really want to go here and deal with data, it just put six for the high bound. Just put six here. Everything more than six is going to be red. Right, so now you can easily show to the client and say, okay, if more than six is enough, is this. I think I'm so used to giving workshops for the firms, so you guys don't show it to the client, but like for your final presentation, that's the same thing. <laughs> the other way is, you know what, I want to just get the graph for when, tem when wind speed is more than six. I don't care, when it's less, it's, it's not useful. Hello conditional statement, the same thing that we talked about, right? So what, ha what happens in the, I think it's so much stuff here, I just remove this down here, I just remove these two up here, so it's more clean. What happens in the Windrows component, if you read this, it's, it's written here. In this component, the first list is always wind speed. Right? In the other components, the first list is whatever you connect. If this one is wind speed. I said when wind speed is more than six, I want the wind rows for that. Just go ahead and type A is bigger than six. Or insert the panel, A is bigger than six. Just connect it to conditional statement. It redo your wind rows, right? Just double click type A is bigger than 6. Double click, type panel if you get confused with bringing the panel the other ways and double click, type A is bigger than 6 and then connect it there, right? So what happened, everybody is following? Yes, it made this, what, what was your maximum wind speed? High bound? High bound doesn't, oh, high bound doesn't matter. If I do high bound 6, it just changes the colors. Oh, no. That's weird. That's a bug. High bound, it, it shouldn't, this is a bug. Right? Remove this. And I found a bug. That's kind of weird. Oh, because... It should, yeah, because the legend can't can't create a legend. That shouldn't happen, though. That's uh, that's something that I should get fixed. So now, if you look at this, Windrows is kind of useful, you know, because Windrows in general, we always plot Windrows. I mean, there are so many discussions if Win data is accurate or not. We don't want to go there right now, but. Assume we have good windrows, right? Just showing the windrows doesn't help that much. We want to have the windrows for the time that we are looking at, and we want to know at that time if we have enough wind speed, right? Right now, I'm talking about something that you should think, okay, what about temperature? Is it only speed? No, it's not only speed, it's temperature. Then what, what else if you want to do natural ventilation? What's that? Direction is important, but like, what is a good time to, to do a natural ventilation based on the weather data? Humidity, wind speed, and, and temperature. I mean, there are different ways, like, you, if, if it, this is indoor, if it's outdoor, kind of like, you get radiation too, right, Some, somehow. In, in, like, another good news is Chris is developing, like, a new whole package for comfort calculation using Ladybug, which is something that I'm missing right now. And when he, he does that, like, it will be like a new, new stuff comes in. It, it will open up, like, new kind of discussions that we can, we can basically do using Ladybug. But now, let's, let's do it with what we talked about. We said about temperature, speed, and, and uh, humidity. We already have wind speed there, right? So let's connect temperature. I go get the temperature, I connect it to annual hourly data, right? And now if you zoom out, you have actually two graphs. I select the temperature and I connected it to annual hourly data. 
we have four hours to the to the break, and and I I, I told you we can't get to some path. So uh, so what happened? Now you have two graphs, right? So the first one, what you see, the numbers on top of this is meter per second. The second one here is temperature. So now you have a wind rose which basically shows you where the wind comes and how fast the wind is and how frequent. But this time it gives you something more, it's temperature. Go ahead and connect the humidity too. Humidity, relative humidity, press shift, connect it to hourly data. So now if I zoom out, I have three. Right now, unfortunately, I mean, there, if, if you know about data trees and all of the stuff, there is a way to manage it, to, to use a single legend parameters and have different colors for three different graphs, but it's not something that we want to do right now. So just assume we don't, we don't go that, that way. If you want to do it, you can copy paste three different components and, and change the colors for, for each one, for example. But now I got three graphs. And here, actually, if you go down here, because my conditional statement is, is still connected, it says the wind speed more than six is this number of hours during the year this thing is applied, which is 25% of the time. You know, so it's already giving you some stuff that you can use it for. Okay, 25% of the time is good. But six is so high. Like, this is not the number we want to go for. So now I have three layers of data connected. Speed, temperature, and humidity. So I can write, uh, this, 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 is, this is why you had this thing there. I, I can write a conditional statement that basically satisfies natural ventilation. When the wind speed is more than two, the temperature between 18 and 23, these numbers can change. And, uh, and the uh, relative humidity is less, less than AB. How I know A, B, and C is the order that I connected my data. If you have a different order, then B may represent something else, right? So now, if you connect this to this conditional statement, It will show you a tiny graph because more, the more I apply conditional statement, the less average will satisfy that. So your wind is going to be, your wind rose is going to be smaller. And what we are seeing here is, do you remember the, the first wind rose? Let's, let me remove this. And if you work on, based on this, you will say, okay, it's not that much of a difference in this range, right? all from south to the east. But like the reality is, this many of these times, it's not really good for natural ventilation. So you do this uh, conditional statement, and it tells you, well, you know, actually north and south. You, you just change how you think about data, and you cha it changes your design. And now there is something that I'm not considering. And what is that? There is one more thing that I'm not considering about this space. And to help you, is it a school or is it a, is it a whole house? What's the difference? Yeah, schedule. You're using it in different hours. So that's why you have analysis period. So you can select just to draw the wind rows from 8 to 10 during whole the year, right? So that's the wind rows you, you really want to look at for your design, if your wind, wind data is accurate. So now we get here, we have 15 minutes that you can go get fresh air. Is it raining still? Get some water, I don't know, and come back. But uh, if you want, uh, this, is, this is something interesting too. I just, let me just show you this pretty fast, and then you don't have to do it, and we will go for the break. It shouldn't take more than five minutes. So I go and I just remove everything uh, from this. I don't know if, no. Uh, right click, disconnect, disconnect all. It tells me something. It tells me like the conditional statement has been applied, but there is no B and C, you know, because I have already this thing connected. So I just disconnect this. Then I get my wind rows, you know. So I see this wind rows, for example, and then, especially when you start, I have no idea what does it mean. Like, okay, it's, 
like what is the wind speed here actually this is not the best graph so it tells you uh, calm for something Th this each line shows 76 hours of the year and it g tells me something is 15.4 but I'm like okay what does it mean really and the best way to understand what does it mean is to compare it with with the place that you're used to you know if you're living in another city for a long time you probably know what does it mean a wind speed in that city the maximum wind speed. you know you have an idea you can basically use the average so this is one of the things that I usually do. So for example, this is the wind direction, right? The wind speed. You can use the component that I showed. I said it's not going to take more than five minutes, right? I lied. So this is the number. Then you can use average uh, component here. You can connect the numbers. So the average is 4.5. Is it high? Is it low? I mean, you should know because this is, but many people don't know. So what you can do is usually go and insert another file. Usually in other softwares you can't do it because, do you have another weather file, Rami, somewhere? Let's check. See, back to slash. Let's see if they have Energy Plus. Cool. So I, I select golden NREL weather file. So I can connect that and then, and then it will draw another Windrose for me. But this wind rose is on top of the other wind rose. What I can do, I can draw a point, bring it here, right? And then bring the point here, at, if you remember how we do it. You just type point, right click, set one point. And then you connect this point as the center point input. And you set this thing to run. So now you have, I have two graphs. And there's multiple data on top of this that I have to disconnect. So right click, disconnect all. I, I can move this. So now you see it's a little bit easier to read. But again, like I don't know because this is 17, this is 15. What you can do, this is what I said. You can have one legend parameter. And I connect here, maximum is 15, high bound. So now the legends are set. They are not the same scale because the frequency are different. I'm thinking like to find a better way. So if you want to compare, they, they show like basically they show the same circle size, but you, you can compare. But you can use uh, native Grasshopper components to create 